Hi, everybody. I'm Beth Rusky. I'm with Tier International, and joining me today are two of my lovely partners. They're brilliant women who are phenomenal consultants and coaches. And joining me today is Melissa Thornley and Alice, Dr. Allison Miller. So today's topic is the connection between possibility and leadership. And we're going to give you, we're going to talk about things in three chunks. We're going to talk about why is possibility important for leaders? Um, what are the traps to watch out for? And we have a code phrase for that. And that's anything's possible. We'll talk about that in a moment. <laughs> and then, you know, we're going to share with you what we do to reconnect to possibility, because uh, we do think it's very, it's important. And each of us have a different relationship to it. So that's the conversation for today. Hope you'll enjoy, uh, hope you'll enjoy it. Let's start, ladies, with um, why is it important for leaders to be connected to possibility? As leaders, what does that do for us, for our teams, for the likelihood of achieving a goal? What do you think? Okay, I'll, 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 I'll go first this time. Allison, you go first next time. I, I will. So we keep on track. Um, so what I would say is it's important to keep an open mind about what possibility is because what we think is possible is based on our history. It's based on our experience. It's based on what we know. So in order to bring in new possibility, we need other points of view. We need a diverse team. As leaders, we need to lean into our colleagues, people who have different skill sets, people who have different MOs, people who come from different countries and are different genders and are different ages. So the more diverse streams of thought that come in mean that we have a wider array of what is possible. Hmm. Yeah, Alison, what would you add to that? I would add that, you know, fundamentally as a leader, possibility is about being able to see with wider eyes, which is right to Melissa's point, you know, that it's not just your eyes, it's really a commitment to see, you know, what, what is our business about? What, what problems do we solve? What do we offer in the world? Can that be expanded? Can it be deepened? Can it, can it have a, you know, a bigger reach? make a bigger difference, whatever it is for the organization to, when you can see through wider eyes, there's a, just a depth of possibility. And that's exciting for people to be on board where you feel like there is a ship with a group of people who are working in cooperation because they're so inspired by what seems to be possible. You know, it's interesting. Um, as I'm listening to both of you, I went to beliefs, you know, that you know, um, the mindsets we have are so important in this equation of possibility. And there's one phrase that I know we all use it when we're dealing with clients, whether we're dealing with a team or we're dealing one-on-one -on -one with clients. And, you know, when somebody makes a statement and they make it like a proclaimed truth, like it's the truth, like it's just true, right? And one of the best things I've seen us do is to challenge that belief with a little bit, well, how is that true? How is that not true? And that's a way to, as you're talking about, Allison, widen the lens, widen the eyes of possibility because you're expanding someone's view. <clears throat> and when you do that, then they can catch up to, oh, well, maybe there's something I'm not seeing here. You know, so they can actually be more open to possibility than mm. just, this is all I can see, therefore this is all that's possible. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, the beach ball might be red over here. You just don't see it, right? So the three of us are um, somewhat similar in, in our um, uh, Colby makeups, which is uh, an assessment that we like. We're, we're quick starts, we're innovators. So possibility kind of goes you know, with the territory based on our innate strengths. But what are some of the pitfalls? What comes into place that, you know, Melissa, you, you went off on a great ramp that I wish we were recording um about you know how you hate some phrases about possibility so let, let's talk about traps to watch out for when we're talking about po possibility and helping people see possibility well i think sometimes it can also feel real pie in the sky you know mm -hmm. like that it can it can it can that that approach of anything is possible for people can be experienced to be on the receiving end of that can really feel like a profound lack of empathy 
awareness or being able to sense into the lived experience that other people are having. And so I think it's a big trap is um, it can, it also, there's a difference I think between a real deep embodied sense of connection of a, a possibility that's coming from a more like a wider lens versus a possibility that's really coming more from a fix it mode. Mm -hmm. It's really actually being underneath the engine is really fear, you know, where it, it doesn't, it lacks an authenticity to it. And I think that often feels really yucky to be led by someone in that space, you know? That's a great word, yucky. <laughs> Can't think of any other word to describe it, it's yucky. Yeah. What about yeah. you, Melissa? What are some of the things, what are the traps that you see people falling into or that you caution people about? Yeah, the, yeah, the, uh, yucky is a great a, gr a great phrase that is um, not as colorful as phrases I've used before with the <laughs> anything is possible and everything is possible people. Those people need to take a long hike off a short pier. But in any event, it's all about looking at, yes, what is possible and what's like really possible. So if you look at it from an emotional intelligence perspective, if you have, if you are so optimistic and you are so exercising that skill of optimism that you are not touching base with reality, then that leads to what Allison, what you commented on earlier, a lack of empathy for whether it's the people on your team, whether it's clients or customers you're trying to serve, you just, you aren't connected into reality. And then that is typically going to mean failure, failure for a project, failure for um, your own personal failure. It's, if there's a, uh, Allison, you're probably, and, and Beth, you two are probably familiar with the whole whoop um, the whoop approach to yeah. whether it's studying or goal setting, where you look at the obstacle, right? For people who are so optimistic that they're not looking at the obstacle, then you cannot then prepare proactively to handle and deal with the obstacle. So being optimistic is great to have an optimistic mindset is great. And it has to be tempered with what actually is the data, what actually is going on with my team, what actually is going on within the industry and the world at the time. So all of those things are not to shrink possibility. It's just to give it context so that you can actually have your possibility be actionable. If it's not actionable, then whatever is possible, you never leave the land of possibility into actually making something tangible. Yeah. Well, those are, that, that's excellent. I, I think the other thing that is occurring for me is that, you know, there's a lot of people that hear possibility as change and they completely collapse like, oh my gosh, if I start thinking about possibility or I'm brainstorming new ideas or whatever, then I have to, right? I have to get becomes the phrase and they have to step into something. And I think it's important for people to recognize when you're in a possibility mode, you're not necessarily in the action mode yet to what you're talking about, Melissa. You're in a you're in the brainstorming, you know, is it real? What 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 would be good here? And I think when people have a tendency, some people do, some don't, to collapse that need to change with possibility, then they will just opt out. They'll just like they'll then then they'll start to fear possibility conversations. And you remember that just because we're talking about possibility does not mean we are committing to the action yet. There's another step that has to occur. So I think those are really great traps, you know, that uh, then we can just kind of have people be on the lookout for. So let's, let's wrap up, let's do a round of what is your way or what does connecting to possibility do for you as a leader? Well, how does it, how does it serve you? when you do it well. <laughs> Alison, how about you? You want to go first on that? Yeah. <clears throat> I think that possibility for me is definitely about receptivity. It's the idea that, hold on, so easy. I know for myself, I have a lot to do every day to just be so busy and in the doing. And that's, you know, that's great. You can get a lot of stuff done that way. And we need to be able to move into that kind of more masculine energy. But what can get neglected for me, and I think possibility connects me to it, is a sense of, can I sit back and just let myself dream about what's possible without needing to know how? Mm -hmm. That makes a huge difference. And I have to constantly remind myself to do that. Yeah, that's the how gripper, man. That's a, that's a big one. Melissa, how about you? Well, 
what possibility does for me as a leader, first of all, I thrive on connecting with others to create more possibility. So connecting with other collaborators really supports possibility for me as a creative leader then that possibility begets action and I have to see some tangible results. So even if it's just taking baby steps, the baby steps lead me to more possibility. Yeah, I, you know, I've always found that when I can just take one step, it starts the momentum trail. Yeah. So that's great. Um, I think for me, the thing about, you know, possibility is that it's, it's really a source of hope. Like it really gets in my bones and, you know, if I believe it's possible, so there's the key thing there, belief, but if I believe it's possible, it just kind of lightens me up and gives me a sense of hope for what could be around the corner. And of course it has to have an action plan and execution beyond that, but it's the starting point for me. It's, it is the beginning of brainstorming. And I, like, like you, I enjoy that a lot. It, it actually fuels me energetically. So wherever you are, as we are talking about possibility, we hope you enjoyed the conversation. We enjoyed having it and um, find out why it's important to you. Find out how it works for you and watch out where you get trapped up with it because there is such a thing as too much possibility. It actually can be counterproductive. Thanks for joining us.